When you enter the National Museum of the Marine Corps, this lobby is the first hint that you're somewhere special. From the stirring architecture to the suspended aircraft to the quotations etched in stone, there's a sense of purpose and direction here, a history of service, of being ready to answer the call of duty. Petty Officer Joseph Aldrich met up with Staff Sergeant Stephen Sullivan to get a special tour and a preview of what you can expect to experience if you get a chance to visit. Throughout history, the Marine Corps has always been the branch of service to be the first to fight. This distinction is a result of the Marine Corps' ability to ensure a constant state of readiness for all its units. No other place is this fact more evident than at the Marine Corps' newest shrine, the National Museum of the Marine Corps. I'm here at Tun Tavern where, according to legend, Captain Samuel Nicholas recruited the first Continental Marines in 1775. This actually isn't the original Tun Tavern. That 18th century building was in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. This replica is located in Triangle, Virginia, inside the National Museum of the Marine Corps. With me today is Staff Sergeant Stephen Sullivan. He's going to give me a tour of the museum. How you doing, Staff Sergeant? How you doing? Good, thank you. Staff Sergeant, can you tell us a little bit more about the Tun Tavern? Actually, the Second Continental Congress used to meet in the upstairs room of Tun Tavern, and that's where they drafted the original re resolution forming the, the Marines back in 10 November 1775. Now, our recreation of Tun Tavern here, what we did is we went around to the local taverns in the area and in Philadelphia to get a look at what the inside of a tavern would look like because Tun Tavern, the Marine Sun Tavern, burned down in 1800. All right, you ready for your tour? Let's go to Making Marines. If there's one place that exemplifies readiness, it's Marine Corps boot camp. Recruits learn to be ready from the moment they arrive at Paris Island or San Diego. Okay, we're at making a Marine. Uh, in the Navy, we have the bus. What's with the yellow footsteps? All right, if you've gone to recruit training in the last 50 years, you know these yellow footprints. Drill instructor gets on the bus, he welcomes you on board Paris Island or in San Diego, and then you get off the bus, you hit your first drill movement, which is at the position of attention, and allows the drill instructors to keep track of who's come off the bus and how many recruits they got inbound. And then you get a little one-on-one -on -one time with them and we're going to do that next. All right, let's go. Staff Sergeant Sullivan led me to a sound booth where I heard the loving tones of a Marine drill instructor. Gravity, go! Gravity, go! Aye, 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 go! So what'd you think? Uh, it's a lot better without the actual person standing there. Hey, it, it's pretty toned down. you got to remember that the museum is geared towards a civilian, and if we had it up full bore and all the drill instructors really saying what they say to us, and we'd probably have little kids running out of here screaming and crying, and that wouldn't be good for public relations. No, it wouldn't. Let's move on. So this is one of the museum's interactives. It allows the civilians to come in and actually play with some of our gear and get an idea of what the pack weight's like. You want to give it a go? All right, sounds good. Yep. And just stand straight oh. up. Victory. We've all learned in history class the significance and the magnitude of the battle for Iwo Jima. Uh, what's the Iwo Jima immersion? Well, the Iwo Jima immersion allows the guests in the museum to go into a pre-brief on an LST, see how they're going to assault the island of Iwo Jima, and then they'll get to board a virtual landing craft and see what it looks like from the boat to the shore before that assault happens. Not only was this exhibit visually overpowering, the deck of the landing craft actually vibrates with the sound of naval gunfire. Lynn Izell is the director of the National Museum of the Marine Corps. Uh, most people think that the architect's major inspiration was the famous flag raising photograph of World War II at Iwo Jima, but it could just as easily be a contrail of an aircraft to the upward thrust of an artillery piece. Most people see that famous flag raising image and, and certainly uh, we've used that liberally with uh, our uh, icons and our logos. Here we have the first flag raised over Mount Suribachi during the battle for Iwo Jima. However, it's not the same flag that we see in this image that most people associate with the battle. That's right. There were actually two flags raised on Mount Suribachi. Now, Lieutenant Schreier, his platoon, fought up to the summit of Suribachi and raised this flag that's hanging up, the smaller one, 
in the midst of fighting. That's the one that everyone remembers and cheered and the ship's horns were going off and that was a big deal. But they wanted a flag that everybody on the island could see that we were at the top. So they raised the second flag. And that raising of the second flag is the iconic photograph that Joe Rosenthal took that we all know well today. And do you have both flags at the museum? Yes, we do have both flags, but we switch them off periodically to preserve the flags. The battle at Chosen Reservoir in Korea is a classic example of how Marines were ready to fight in any clime and place. The Chosen Reservoir exhibit is a climate-controlled room held at a lower temperature than the rest of the museum. It comes complete with wind, cold, and sound effects simulating that battle. So what's the first thing you notice in this room? It's much colder than the rest of the museum. That's right. This is a frozen Chosen in northern Korea. Now the average temperature up there was about 20 degrees below zero. Knowing this, the Marines had all their cool weather gear, their ice pack boots and everything, and they were ready for the winter season. What they weren't ready for was the 10 Chinese divisions that surrounded the 1st Infantry Division, and the Marines had to fight their way out of this. Now we didn't retreat. What we did is we took a 180 degree turn, and we just fought the enemy in another direction. I'm here with Chuck Gerboven. He's the gallery manager at the National Museum of the Marine Corps. Thanks for taking time to be with us today, Chuck. No problem. Uh, first question, can you take us through the process of what it takes to get these galleries put together? Uh, the process was a long one. It took approximately seven years. Uh, there was a team assembled of historians, uh, Marine Corps veterans, active duty Marines, who took a look at the entire history of the Marine Corps and had the very tough job of trying to determine what the key points were in the history of the Marine Corps to uh, display here in the museum. Is there a, a, an underlying theme that runs, runs throughout the museum? Through our, through our displays, our immersive displays and our tableaus, uh, we do show off a, uh, a sense of readiness. Uh, the Marine Corps is a force in readiness and we are displaying the uh, combat tactics that have been developed throughout the years uh, in the Marine Corps. If there's anything that Marines today can relate to back in Vietnam, it's Way City. It was just like Iraq. In Way City, you had restricted fire zones, you couldn't fire on Buddhist temples. You had insurgents, snipers, people setting IEDs, and the enemy was entrenched. Every time the Marines went out on the streets, they were under fire and they were ready to go. Now, something that they don't have today is this. This is the M50 Antos. It's six 106 millimeter recoil for rifles. One shot from this tank will take down an entire building. After completing my visit to the museum, one thing is certain. The National Museum of the Marine Corps is not only a testament to the Marine Corps' fighting spirit, but also a prime example of a force and eternal readiness. For the Naval Media Center, I'm Petty Officer Joseph Aldrich.